Yo, check this out, my boy. Just started doing Airbnb this year, already doing six figures within one year. Yeah, the opportunity out here is just that crazy. Another thing that's gonna impress you is his decoration skills of him and his wife. They joints is on 10. I'm with my man Malik and he's gonna give us a tour of this Airbnb. First things first, I wanna say thank you Absolutely. for taking time out your day to give us a tour. But before we walk into the property, did you paint this or did you get to property like that? No, so actually the property came like this already. One of the things that kind of stood out to us was, the, was these blue shutters. Um, I mean, as soon as you come around the roundabout in this cul-de-sac, you'll see that it kind of pops as soon as you as soon as you see it. As soon as so, you see it. Yeah, so that's one of the things that drew me to really choosing this property, but it came like this, surprisingly. Okay, and as far as the cameras, is that you or did you, yeah. uh, your cameras? So, so this one was already installed when we got here. So we were able to kind of reprogram that into our system. This I installed as well. So this is kind of another entryway Nest camera. I got one here in the front and I got one in the back. Okay, all right. Well, let's start the tour. Let's do it. All right, so basically the house on the outside is beautiful. Inside is definitely um, immaculate. It's pretty much flawless, and we're gonna get to that. But yes. behind your head, you have the checkout checklist. Correct. So checkout is at 11 a.m. Yes. Please collect used linens and place them on the floor in front of the bed. Wash the dishes. Please wash any used dishes and collect all trash. TV and lights off. Please turn off all TVs and lights prior to departure and close any open windows. Double check. Please be sure not to leave any personal items behind due to quick turnaround times between guests. We will not be responsible for any lost or missing items. Lock the door. Ensure that the front and back door of the property is secured upon your departure. So he has all his rules. Uh, <laughs> Makes my rules look shameless. <laughs> um, so you didn't have to paint, you just had to decorate. I painted one room uh, that has a sort of uh, accent wall that we did. Other than that, it's just wallpaper and, and everything was just decor. Well, this is a beautiful wooden table. Where did you get this from? A Facebook marketplace. So this table, I'm pretty sure it goes for like over a thousand dollars. And we got it for 450. With the chairs? With the chairs, the whole setup. Uh, this carpet also right here, uh, obviously you can see it's a nice carpet, $35. This desk, did you get that used or you, was this brand new? Nope, this was also from Facebook Market as well. It actually came with a gamer chair, which I like to game, so I kind of kept the gamer chair. So it was 135 <laughs> for the gamer chair and the desk, and I was like, hey, it's, it's in perfect condition, so I said, I'll take it. 135 for this. Yeah. All right, so in here, you didn't have to do much, right? No, no, nothing at all. I mean, all of this came like this, stainless steel and whatnot, so pretty much a new dishwasher. Now this bathroom, right, it's pretty nice and you don't have to do much with your decorations. Just, you know, do a little, throw these little decorations up and um, get the uh, soap dispenser. That was an easy one for you. Yeah, that was simple. So your living room, the shared space, right? Correct. I do something similar. Mine is not as cute as his though, <laughs> but like. You thank my wife for that. She does, she's great with Canva. So we set that up on Canva. What mine is like a, a big piece of paper, a regular piece of paper, and just um, and these Amazon things that stand up, and they just one in the living room and one in the office room of my Airbnb. Keep it's just simple. yeah, it's keep <laughs> simple, but it's not as nice as this. So Appreciate mine just say Wi-Fi code. I don't even think it's aligned. You, you know what I'm saying? Point. Just straight to the point. <laughs> so we're in the living room, nice size. This is a beautiful chair. How much did that chair run? They can go threes. 350. Okay. Uh, we got it for 200. It was brand new in a box, pretty much. Again, Facebook Market. Facebook Market. Lady who just had it kind of sitting, didn't have a place for it, so she decided to sell it. And we picked it up from her. This beautiful rug, Marketplace, right? Marketplace. And how much was this? $65. $65. This living room set. Yeah, this living room set, probably our best deal, 60 bucks. $60, yeah. dude. I had a friend of mine come, hit it with the extractor. Uh, clean it up a little bit and now it looks good as new. Now the TV, did you go new or did you go used with TV? This is used. This TV was 75 bucks. 75 dollars. works good as new, so that was good for me. All right, let's go upstairs, man. Here, one of the guest bedrooms. I see you went with the wallpaper, which is beautiful. I did, thank you. Like with your Airbnbs, right? You're giving the experience. And with that experience, it's like peace, tranquility. It's coziness. Coziness. Yeah. Comfort. Yeah. You're just giving that to them. 
Absolutely. This is real neat. <laughs> like, check this out. <laughs> Guys, on my Airbnb, I swear the towels are just in the bathroom. Like, I, I, ain't, I ain't going out like this. I'm not giving out no experience. Correct, correct. You know? Well, I mean, it's important for us. You know, I, like, you know, me with my military background, I've been taught how to make a good bed. So that's important, the way it looks. Um, my wife is, is very good with the intricacies and details. So, you know, we watch YouTube videos on how to fold towels in a neat way. The roll kind of stood out to us, so we learned how to do that, and it just looked good on the beds, looked good in pictures, so we kind of just rolled with it. This chair, how much was that chair? That chair, I think it was like 60 bucks. So yeah. $60, we got, okay. We got this mattress, the mattress and the chair came together, we got it from the same person, so I think all in all is like maybe 100 bucks for the mattress and 60 bucks for the chair. And what about for the bed frame? Bed frame was like one. 130 i think it was your tv this was pretty new this was 200 it's a smart tv so it's already got all the uh streaming channels programmed into it so yeah 200 dollars. so i just come in with my login password right and i could uh now we actually have one for our company that's kind of on all of our tvs but if you do have uh, a subscription to like prime or something like that that we don't have then you can go ahead and log in oh so i can just straight watch tv with your login that's correct yeah okay i tell people they gotta ne bring netflix, their own login. netflix not you know you gotta be if you got another subscription then you gotta bring your own login okay <laughs> i don't give them no subscription like you bring your own login you want your own and mine so we're going with the wallpaper, I, I, which I love. So y'all don't be surprised y'all see wallpaper in my <laughs> YouTube room soon. Let's talk about this bed. Slow platform bed. How much you, you paid for the bed and the mattress and all that, you think? Man, the mattress was like, again, marketplace. We got a mint condition, $25 for the mattress. The bed frame was 200 It was pretty new as well. Like the bedding, the duvet, Ikea. That's kind of like where we get all of our linen and stuff from. Um, along with our pillowcases and whatnot. So, yeah, mattress $25, bed frame $200. Um, I believe we got the TV here for, I think it was $100. How many inches is that TV? This is, I think, it's a 55 inch. It fits the room perfectly. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. It sets, sets everything off. Absolutely. All right, so now we have bathroom. Um, this is a three bedroom, two bath house. Bathroom, not too much decorated. Everything was here, right? Yeah, yeah, everything was here. Uh, we What we did was a lot of you can see the, the mirror frames are a little bit different in each of the bathrooms. So we got some little accents to kind of uh, yeah. blend in with that here. That's my wife's doing. So. Woo! Yeah, this, this this is this is the focal point. This, this is the selling point. Enjoy, yeah, this is the pride and joy. <laughs> okay, so hey, I want y'all to look at this accent wall. Just look at this accent wall, right? The craftsmanship, like the detail. So luckily for us, my wife has a brother who does construction. So I knew that I wanted something that was gonna pop in this room, especially for the pictures. So we seen a couple designs, uh, got some inspiration on Instagram showed it to him he, we kind of got some pieces of wood did the measurements he stuck them up there everything was nice and uh, leveled and measured and uh this is how it kind of came out it's a finished product this is a king size bed yes so how much was this king size bed the king size bed we got the bed frame and the mattress basically brand new for 100 bucks all right so <laughs> one, one, facebook marketplace facebook marketplace facebook, facebook marketplace right. guys i gotta you it's a full-time job looking for the stuff yeah, but it it's, it's worth it all right, so how much was that back there? Basically, you talking about the whole accent wall? The so, accent wall, how much, if you had to guess. It was cheap, maybe less than $100. And what about this TV? TV was 200 This is another smart TV, so. Brand new or used? It's brand, I mean, marketplace, but basically brand new. They had they had just got it, didn't have space for it. So. Okay, let's go here. Stand-up shower. Yes. Got the rain shower. So you didn't have to decorate much, but this is a, definitely an experience. I'm noticing it's a towel in every be uh, bedroom. Correct. Like if they book in, like um, they doing two people per room, right? Two mm -hmm. parents and, and then four, that'd be six people. Correct. Do you put out extra towels and stuff for them? We do. Uh, there's a closet uh, in the hallway that also has extra towels. Typically, we try to put, you know, two of the body towels on the bed it so that they know they have access to it. Okay, all right, cool. Now, the closet that has the extras, do you keep a lock on that door? No, so that's for their use. Oh, that's for their use. Uh, yeah, okay. it's for their use. So if we know, I mean, you kind of judge it based on how many people are coming in, how many guests in the reservation. It's actually a thing where we kind of want to, my wife has been telling me we're putting too much out. So we might, you know, start to take a little bit away depending on how many guests because we don't want people using unnecessary uh, towels. Yeah, <laughs> like if you look closely, guys, they got... 
the Q-tips <laughs> and the toothpicks. Like they, it's all in the details. All in the details. Yeah. Dude, I don't give out none of this. <laughs> stuff, you know what I mean? Like I'm really feeling bad about my Airbnb experience. Well, there's actually, uh, if you look inside the, under the cabinet here, you, we got a few extra things for like the females. You know, we got some some female products. You know, a lot of people forget their toothbrush. All, all the time. All the time. A little toothpaste in there for them. And then we got some Clorox wipes, you know, for people to keep things clean. So, yeah, we try to... <laughs> I'm, I'm stealing these. So I know my guests going to steal them. So I ain't never put them out. But, yeah. Right. Uh, right, cool, so, cool. yeah, it's the little things. And we have had, you know, plenty of reviews reflect that, you know, everything is here for the guests, you know, more than okay. what they needed. So okay. that's good. We appreciate that. Let's go back downstairs. Yeah. And we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> All right. So we just toured the house, man. It's pretty much immaculate. Thank you, thank you. Let's hop into the numbers. You're doing five figures a month uh, doing this Airbnb thing. Now with this one, how much per night does this rent for? Right now, so obviously I do the uh, AirDNA assessment to kind of see what the property's gonna make. AirDNA kind of tells me that this will go for an average of 199, so $200 a month. Now obviously with us, AirDNA typically is on the low side of things. And with some of our other properties, we've kind of proven that we've done above what uh, the projection of AirDNA, AirDNA are. So with this, I would say 200 to 225, especially with slow season kind of running around. But uh, come peak season, spring, summertime, I mean, it could definitely easily roll into the threes um, or fours. How much is your cleaning fee? For this, for this, for this uh, property. property is 135. $135 for the cleaning fee. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go for $200, $225, and, and you use to gauge your comparables, airdna.com. Yes. Okay. Sure. I use a site. It's called ridebull.com or I've something. Heard that as well. You get the property. Now, walk me through this. this we're going to just talk about this transaction. Yeah, all right. So you're doing uh, what is called corporate leasing, right? Yes. All right. So corporate leasing, and I see the people on social media talk about this, but I don't follow the trends because. Mm -hmm. Normally, um, if you fo if you just follow social media, you can go into a black hole. Yeah, yeah. Right. People will rent a mansion and uh, cars to get you to <laughs> like them, all types of stuff. Right, you right. know, just to make their lie look good. So, do you go out to owners, property managers? Like, how do you find these type of deals? Yeah. So in the beginning, um, I kind of hit the ground running. Really, it all started. My wife came up with the idea. She woke up. Um, she wasn't working at the time, and she was just kind of thinking of how to make some extra money. So she came up with the idea, she said, you know, why don't we just do Airbnb? I have a background in customer service. She um, is very good with interior design and whatnot. So that as a team, we felt, I felt that this would be a good avenue to, uh, to pursue. So uh, with that, as far as the process, um, I have a pitch. We, you know, started our LLC. So now when we're coming to these property managers and these owners, you know, we're presenting ourselves as a professional company. So typically my pitch would say, hey, you know, um, my wife and I run a corporate housing company where we, you know, host, we will, we're looking to utilize your property to host our traveling clients. Now, most of our clients are traveling professionals. They can stay anywhere from three to 180 days, depending on the circumstance. You know, we ensure them that their property will be taken care of. It'll be professionally managed, professionally cleaned, and that we would take better care of the property than any regular tenant that they would have. On top of that, what is every property manager or every homeowner worried about? They're worried about consistent income. Yeah. So I'm also relaying to them that, listen, we're, you know, if we could do a one to two year lease, I'm open to that. You know, this is repeat uh, business for you. This is consistent rent. Not only that, but the property will be taken care of. It's kind of a win-win situation. Yeah. That's how that transaction transaction happens. Now with this property in particular, you know, from pounding the pavement and just going out and, and setting up appointments, I was able to meet a property manager who I built a connection with. And he understood my business model. He was completely on board. I initially, in, in the beginning of the year, I had an appointment with him for another home, but unfortunately the owner of that home kind of backed out. So it wasn't because of him, it was more so the owner's decision. So, but I reached back out to him um, about a month and a half ago, which is when we took over this property. And um, I said, hey, is that property available? He said, yeah. So came to see it, same day, he sent me the lease, and it was pretty much a done deal. No background check, 
No income verification, none of that? So yeah, I sent him over obviously my documents that I was uh, legitimate as a company, um, bank statements and whatnot, so he could see the revenue coming in and out. But other than that, it's just the relationship that kind of really pushed the deal over, so. Okay, so let's say if this is my first one. Mm -hmm. As far as bank statements, I would have to probably show my personal bank statements, is that correct? Uh, so if your first one, they're probably going to look at your, because I mean, I'm not going to lie. In the beginning with our first two units to get our foot in the door, we kind of used our personal uh, credit. Okay. Um, it's not the most ideal way to get into it. But for us, what, the main thing that we were worried about was that we weren't doing something under the nose of management. So Correct. us and management were on the same page. We're not sneaking around trying to do Airbnb. Yeah. Um, so for us, that was okay just to get our foot in the door. But every property after those first two was in our company name, so. And then after the first two properties, you start the company, you mm -hmm. start to get income under it, so now you got verification of. Correct. Okay, that yeah, makes sense. Now we have a little bit of credibility, now we have a, a business credit score, and you know, that has also kind of gone up. Uh, but again, it, it, you know, if you build that just one rela good relationship with somebody who knows you, um, you know, a pro property managers, owners, they, if they have any more properties, they're going to come to you, especially if you have a good track record with them. Right. Hey, you know, here's this property. Do you want it? So with this, right? So you're a husband and wife couple. Yeah. I met your wife. Man, be real. I, I don't know who the better decorator. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I want to give credit to her. Yeah. <laughs> but the stuff I've seen you do is yeah, like, dude, yeah. you got an eye for this stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, we, we bounce, we collab, you know what I mean? Yeah, collab. Bounce, yeah, yeah. Bounce ideas off of each other. And that's kind of how we make it work. It's definitely a true partnership. And I'm, I'm definitely honored to be able to be in it with my wife and be able to do this because again the the collaboration is everything i tell people because in in hip-hop culture we don't promote marriage and love enough uh, but with you you're a perfect example and you guys are in your 20s perfect example of four hands going after one goal yes. you can reach the goal quicker Absolutely. than two hands going after one goal Absolutely. like you're like you actually live it yeah so i just want to throw that out there man back to this so, so your husband and wife couple you're doing this um she she's on board yeah. um she helps out now finding all these good deals on facebook marketplace right, right? and i'm gonna add up what Woody spent to furnish this but find all these good deals on facebook marketplace how did that did were you to look or did y'all split responsibilities with looking you uh, and your wife so it's funny i mean we kind of she has a facebook marketplace account and then i kind of signed in also to her account on my phone so we we're both getting like the same notifications and whatnot but i mean we literally just be on there and you know we'll see something that we like but we'll send we'll send multiple messages of course is this available is this available is this available um and then we just wait for the feedback. And then whatever we can kind of pick up immediately, um, we would kind of go and do that. Now for us, one of the things we talked about doing was a strategy where we'll get a bunch of people to, a bunch of things that we like, and then what sometimes we'd offer them a deposit. Now, yeah, it's a bit of a gamble. At the end of the day, it's a small deposit, just so that they know, hey, we're serious about buying. But for us, I'd have to go pick up the the U-Haul truck, you know, because we did we did a lot of this ourselves, you know what I mean. But I pick up the U-Haul truck, and I'd like to make one trip, you know what I mean. So it's like a, as opposed to picking this up one day and picking up that tomorrow, it's like, oh, why don't you just let me give you a deposit, let's wait, you know, till Thursday if that works for you, and I can pick up everything in one shot. So that's kind of how it works. Just the mass messages of things that we like that we think will. Um, go with the whole vibe and the whole strategy that we're using here as far as decorating and then we just take it from there when you going to pick this stuff up right is it just you two guys or no well so like, you have help I, yeah my dad would come and help me out my brother would come you know like on big things like when I went to pick up this couch set my dad and my brother was there to help okay me out and okay on the truck so I mean but if it's little things where just me and her can go then yeah we'll, we'll definitely go and do it. I mean we've had plenty of late nights out scrambling you know, picking up furniture, picking up rugs. It's, it's been a grind, but it's been something that we cherish, you know, because we look at ourselves now as opposed to when we first started. And it's like, man, look at where we are now. And we're so grateful for all those times of just out there in the road, picking stuff up, buying stuff. I had a funny thing that I used to say to her when we were getting started, when we, when we were starting on our first property. And I said, hey, you know, this is funny, babe. I said, we don't, I don't really know what we're doing right now, but we're going to make it happen. So now to have certain systems in place now to be where we are now is definitely um, something that we are thankful for. Now, how long have you been in Charlotte? 
Uh, since 2021, uh, Fe February 2021. Whenever you go to any city, like you literally just have to find your niche, yes. find your lane, and yeah. just go after it. That's it. Hit the ground running. Hit the ground That's running, it. dude. Just hit the <laughs> ground running. All right, so what's your background? Obviously, you work out. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Uh, obviously, <laughs> the guy works out, you know what I mean? A little but, something. But, but, but what's your, your, your professional work background? Did you go to college? You went to college? No, so I did. I went to college for a semester. I mean, I. But for me, I enlisted in the Marine Corps Reserves right after right after high school. Okay. So after high school, I enlisted. I graduated in 2013 um, in, in New York. I enlisted in the Marine Corps uh, Reserves, went away in February of 2020, 20, in February of 2014. Then I had already kind of uh, secured my place at a college that I wanted to go to, John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Okay. In the city, Manhattan. Of course. Yeah. Very so, popular. Yeah. So I went there for a semester, but during that time of me going to school, I was working uh, a part-time job at, doing retail. And then I just, when I wasn't working, I was going to school. So it, it got kind of crazy for me and my schedule. And I was like, you know, what am I doing? You know, and not to not to put down school or anything like that. But for me, I just felt like there was another way. Uh, plus, I decided to, you know, help out financially with my family. So I started working full time. You know, what I mean, I, I did my semester. Um, I didn't go back and I started working full time. Um, from there, I was able to meet a couple um, who were in multi-level uh, network marketing. OK, I learned a lot from them. Um, from their, them and their organization. Um, and that's what kind of gave me the foundation of entrepreneur mindset, right? So from there, I got into a lot of sales jobs, you know, because that was the closest thing to entrepreneurship for me. Literally. Like being able to determine how much money you make based off of the efforts that you put in. Yeah. Um, so I picked up a lot of skills from there. Um, but along the way, I mean, people would say I, I've done it all because even along that time period, like I've had, you know, I did, I'm in the military, so I'm doing the military reserves thing once a month. I had a passion for law enforcement. I got family in law enforcement. So in my mind, I was like, maybe I, you know, I'll be a cop someday. In the midst of that, uh, COVID comes along, kind of throws everything out of whack. I was out of work for about a year. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't complaining because I was getting these checks. I had, wow. never, I had never, you know, experienced something like that. I was getting paid more to stay at home and, 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 and to go to work. So I said, you know what? But I had a, uh, a conversation with one of my aunts one time. Well, uh, she's retired from the military as well. She said, hey man, you know, you can't get complacent with that. You know, just because you're getting these free checks doesn't mean, and it was kind of a wake up call for me. Yeah. So I decided to pursue, uh, you know, law enforcement. Um, I ended up landing a job here at, with the Charlotte Police Department. Um, so I worked as a police officer for about a year. Um, but in the midst of that, that's when my wife, she was a stay at home at the time. Um, and she was like, I'm trying to make some extra money. And that's when Airbnb came into the picture. So um, I was building that while being a police officer. And then it got to a point where I, you know, I was able to kind of just walk away. So here I am now today, uh, I guess you could say a full time entrepreneur for the first time. And I'm loving every bit of it. I mean, it's definitely challenging at times figuring out certain things, but I love it. So. You were receptive to the conversation. You was open yeah. to hearing it. Sometimes people are not open to yeah. that type of advice. I mean, whatever, like, man, I'm gonna get this check and keep, and then the money runs out and yeah. they're in the bad situation. Well, she was somebody that I also respected. Okay. You know, I had a lot of, well, I, I say was, she is someone that I respect. Um, you know, she, she, like I said, retired from the military, then she retired from a government job. So she has her life, you know, kind of together. In order, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, she lives in a beautiful home out in Oklahoma. So I was like, you know, when I was speaking to her, I'm like, yeah, you're right, you know, because she's somebody who comes from hard work. So I was like, yeah, you know, let me not get complacent. Let me, you know, let me still try to move, push myself forward and pursue what it is that I want to pursue and figure things out. So that definitely gave me the kickstart that I needed to get back on track. And the entrepreneurship bug got planted in you yeah. um, with the MLM thing. Yes. With uh, the network marketing. Um, Correct. Yeah. So MLM gets a bad rep. But it one does. thing about it, it will teach you how to beat the payment. Like hit the payment and talk. Yes. You have to, it, you have to open your mouth. You got to talk to people. And you, you got to face rejection <laughs> more importantly. I mean, got I to, think, dude. Man, that's one of the biggest things that holds people back is their fear of rejection. You know what I mean? I've been on countless appointments. You know, hey, this is my company. I'm a corporate housing company. No, we don't do that here. No, we don't do that. Making phone calls. No, actually, absolutely not. That's not allowed. You know, because people think of, 
you know, uh, multiple travelers, you know, multiple guests that think of parties and destruction. Correct. So, you know, and then don't even, don't even think about mentioning Airbnb because the stigma is that Airbnb brings parties, you know what I mean? And destruction, they think of project X, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that was definitely something to overcome. But I remember telling my wife, I was like, listen, if we could just get one, I just want one, somebody is going to say yes. And yeah. after that, after our first, yes, it was, I mean, yeah, the sky was the limit from there. Same thing with, with wholesaling. Yeah. Like, count, you get take countless phone calls of people who, you know, constant rejection. And then you just look for that one yes. Yeah. You get that one yes, it's a $15,000 check. Yeah. So all the other rejections is like, yo, it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? It is worth it. And I mean, just to think about how many calls you can make within 30 days to close a single deal for $15,000. Right. And that's twice as much you know, maybe three times as much what some people make in a single month. I, I would definitely say that. You know what I mean? So it's like, at the end of the day, the people don't see it. You know, one, a lot of people are worried about the safety of things. Yeah. You know, safe check, and I know it's gonna come, as opposed to taking a little bit of risk to have a higher reward. I tell people with me, not quitting and not giving up, it came from my father instilled that in me. He wouldn't let me quit, nothing. Yeah, yeah I broke my arm, I had to get surgery playing football, organized football. <laughs> I didn't want to play, I was like seven or eight. I was like probably eight or nine. I didn't want to play football no more. Yeah. Cause I broke my arm, I'm like, man, they made, not only they made me go to the practice, I was in the slingshot, I just part of the team, go to the games and they made me, I was like, okay, so next year when it's time for football, I'm not going to say nothing. Right, right. Man, they made me go out there and play and However, him not letting me quit carried on to my adult life. Yeah. So when real estate got hard, I just kept going. How many of these do you have? Right now, I have four properties um, that I'm doing the rental arbitrage method with. I just uh, solidified a management deal. Uh, it's my first management deal uh, with a property owner. She has a small private um, space in her home that she wanted to put on Airbnb. So um, my wife and I just finished kind of uh, jazzing the place up and you know doing the accent walls and making it look nice and it just listed so um, we should be getting our first booking on that pretty soon but we did a 20 25 percent management fee um, from that so it should be good and um that's kind of the route that i'm looking to go moving forward uh as opposed to uh invest in our own money um, because it's easy you know you can use other people's money and manage their property for them and collect the kickback so i mean you guys heard it just off that amount of properties bro you can do six figures so it's not like like rental properties like rental properties in order to make six figures you need a lot a lot you know <laughs> not only that but the investment obviously is the, the vet, right you're so you're getting in with lower overhead yeah. and you know you can make six figures with just five and in the meantime just growing and growing and growing so right. you know and yeah, man, this is this is something. I, I like this. You're listed on Airbnb. Correct. Uh, VRBO. Yes. What other sites? We've just started kind of dealing with Furnish Finder. I haven't really had a, a, a tenant because on there they call them tenants. Um, I haven't utilized one yet, but I am looking to be, you know, with the slow season coming, because typically with Furnish Finder, you'll get a traveling nurse who's looking to travel for two or three months. So um, it's something that we're getting familiar with now to kind of take us through the slow season. But as of right now, Airbnb, VRBO, Furnished Finder. And I kind of, I did post one or two of my properties on uh, Peer Space, um, especially this property with the aesthetics in here. Yeah. Um, but again, I haven't, I haven't really pursued that as much as I pursued Airbnb and VRBO, so. People are gonna have a tons of questions for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they want to get in touch with you, with Malik, how what, what's your social media handles? It's it's funny. So I could de I'm definitely on social media. <laughs> the problem is that you know uh, we haven't started a site or a social media platform to really push what we're doing. So my wife has been documenting on uh, on her social media as far as our journey. Yeah, uh, she's great with that with content creation and whatnot. Okay, I, mean, I can definitely push both of that. Uh, push both of our social medias for a DM. Or please, email, please, yeah. Um, so for, for me, I'll just say it, it's, it's uh, young, Y-O-U-N-G, underscore N-D, underscore blessed. That's my Instagram. My wife is going to be Steph, S-T-E-P-H, underscore Harris, 21. So uh, shoot any of us a DM. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, I'd be definitely more than willing to uh, answer um, any questions. We're also looking to possibly get into co consulting. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's just another avenue that we're looking to take. The way y'all got this joint mapped out, man, <laughs> with the rules and everything. Yeah. Yeah, um, you definitely need to do some consulting because people are going to have questions. People are going to need help. And 
again, getting into rental properties, man, it's a lot. Yes. It's a lot. And yes. you will need a lot to hit that, that six figure marks a year. And everybody wants to break $100,000 because if you live in any major city in America, mm -hmm. except for New York, New Jersey, California, Connecticut, those places you need at least 150, at least 150 to like live and actually enjoy. Right. You know, every other major city, you need at least $100,000. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, everybody wants to break that mark, but yeah, bro, to do this with just a small amount of properties, man. Um, you know, congrats on all your success, man. And I can see you blowing this out the water, man. And um, to everybody watching, make sure you comment. Like, do you, are you interested in Airbnb? Are you want to do the Airbnb arbitrage where you don't actually own the property? Just let me know your thoughts below, comment. Also, watch the video of my first Airbnb and see how terrible it is compared to this. You gotta start somewhere. But you gotta start somewhere. You know, my next one, I'm gonna do a good job. Yeah. All right. So I'm Nasser, aka the real estate guru. I'm not a guru, I'm a guru because I actually do this business. Peace. <laughs>